We begin tonight with a question. Is the U.S. close to war with Iran? Tensions between Tehran and the West continue to escalate. Recent events show both countries are engaging in a serious dangerous political game. Just this past weekend, Iran claims to have shot down a U.S. drone flying over the country on the same day explosions outside the British embassy in Bahrain. This after the U.S. claimed Iran is behind a plot to kill a Saudi ambassador in Washington right here on U.S. soil. There's been a series of other mysterious explosions as well as assassinations of key scientists. Meanwhile, the U.S. is cracking down on the country through a series of sanctions. All this has some asking, are we already at war with Iran? Well, let's take a look at some of the headlines on the web today. These are the headlines from the Daily Mail, the Atlantic, and Newsmax. All of them ask the very same question, are we already at war with the country? Now, officials on both sides have not shied away from rallying to go to war. How can you forget Senator John McCain's performance a few years back? That old, uh, that old Beach Boy song, Bomb you know? <laughs> Bomb, 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 bomb. <laughs> anyway. And more recently, Republican presidential candidates have said that we aren't being aggressive enough with Iran. Take Mitt Romney, for example. He recognized the gravest threat that America and the world faces, uh, had faced was a nuclear Iran, and he did not do what was necessary to get Iran to be dissuaded from their nuclear folly. What he should have done is speak out when dissidents took to the streets and say America is with you and work on a covert basis to encourage the dissidents. But with everything that has happened, is this proof that a covert war is already taking place? Here to talk more about this is Anthony Schaefer, Director for External Communications Center for Advanced Defense Studies. Welcome, Anthony. Thank you. Um, so we just went through all those events, um, yes. uh, tensions um, going high between the two countries, uh, in, in some instances turning violent. Right. Um, is, are we already in a covert war with Iran? Well, I think it's pretty clear that these are no accidents. Uh, to quote the line from Jaws, this was no boating accident. Uh, the idea is, yes, I think everybody has equities here. Uh, there are issues relating to military, which I think there's no practical way. I know you hear a lot of saber rattling. Look, there's over 300 sites that have been identified as potential nuclear related sites in Iran. So no country is going to go in and just start bombing things at random. Secondly, we've really not determined what we want to do here. Let's remember one of the things about Iran. These are Persians. These aren't Arabs. They're more Western uh, European than they are Arab. And the people, as, as Mr. Romney just stated, you know, in July of 2009 t attempted to rise up. That's where we should be focusing on helping the people gain freedom, not on what the government's doing other than to try to help the government go away. Right. And, you know, we are, we are seeing uh, these covert, uh, more, more uh, low-key operations. Right. Um, uh, do you think that this could be a pretext to an all-out war? Again, I, I just don't know how anybody would be able to sustain a all-out war. Uh, Iran's a very large location. And let's remember one of the other key factors here for everyone, no matter who you are, they are the third largest producer of oil on the planet. So if anything happens to that supply, all resources, all prices go up. So anybody who's considering military action, I don't think fully understands the secondary and tertiary effects of a military action and how bad that would be for everybody. So we really aren't in a position either because of the drawdowns of forces from Afghanistan and Iraq or the practical application of force being that, that you would lose at least or disrupt one third of the oil supplies to the planet. I just don't think there's any way we can do it militarily at this point in time. And even if it's not uh, feasible or, or, or not um, practical, um, why then are we seeing the, the, this language and this push on, on both sides? Uh, um, it seems like we are heading in that direction. We're a nonpartisan think tank. We don't take the right or left. And, and one of the things that I think you're seeing here is one side, uh, the, the Republicans, essentially taking up this, re this Republican Party line. I'm a conservative, but uh, uh, frankly, the idea here is that they're not thinking this through. They are saying what they think the base wants to hear and not actually looking at this thing logically. If X, if Y, then Z uh, does not mean you have to bomb them. You have to find a way to essentially make sure that the nuclear weapons, if they are established, can't be used against us. And the best way of doing that is by government reform, government change, letting the people become free. And I think a free society would not be so predisposed to having this uh, angst against the West. And I think that's the way we should look at this. Um, and I want to ask you, um, with all this talk that, that we are seeing, that, that gives the indication that that war, at least, is definitely not off the table, uh, who stands to benefit from going to war with Iran? Well, I, I, that's a good question. That's an excellent question. Frankly, no one. Uh, 
If the Iranians are attacked, they, they may have capability right now to retaliate against the, the Israelis, against other targets in the Middle East. The Saudis would be uh, one of those. The Saudis, uh, the, the Sunni Shia thing is still an issue. Uh, so therefore, there's really no benefit to going to war. Now the question becomes, what will the Iranians do? How aggressive will they become? And uh, frankly, they, we do believe that they are doing things to be aggressive, they're developing EMP weapons and nuclear weapons, which could be used. But again, the, the, the idea of them using them would not be in their benefit either because they would be devastated. If they use for a, a nuclear weapon or any weapon first, they will be devastated. So I think there's no upside for anyone using military force at this point in time. Um, we do see Israel um, at least, uh, prepping, right. gearing up Absolutely. to go to war with Iran. Right. Um, and, and if that happens, is, is it inevitable that the U.S. is, is going to follow suit and also be at war? The uh, first part of the question, absolutely. They, they fired the Jericho 2 missile about uh, three or four weeks ago, showing that they have this ability to launch missiles. Clearly, I've talked to folks who are on the ground there. They are clearly worried. But the very question you ask me, what will we follow with them, is one they don't even know. Frankly, I don't know if we know. The, no one really has been able to ascertain what the White House would do if push has come to shove on this issue. So I think that's the one thing. Perhaps even this ambiguity of policy may be helping by the fact no one really knows what will happen. And um, while we are seeing this push to go right. to war um, on both ends, uh, not everyone is on board. I want to play you a song here from, from Ron Paul. Sure. Iran does not have an air force that can come here. They don't have, they can't even make enough gasoline for themselves. And here we are, you know, building this case out, please, please. Uh, they're building up this case like, just like we did in Iraq. Build up the war propaganda. There was no Al Qaeda in Iraq, and they had nuclear weapons, and we had to go in. I'm sure you supported that war as well. Yeah. Okay. It's time we quit this. It's time, it's trillions of dollars we're spending on these wars. Just want to get your reaction sure. to that. Um, he kind of called out some of the other candidates for, for playing into this war right. propaganda. Well, I've, I've debated a Representative Paul. I think he's a good guy. We debated on the John Stossel show on Fox News a while back. Uh, he and I don't agree on everything, but this is an area that I think he is more right than the other candidates. Uh, again, we've got to understand not only the fact that maybe they do have a nuclear weapons program that they are developing, but what are you trying to achieve? And if you use military force, what are the downsides? Let's remember, we had a huge downside side of invading Iraq. It's things that people, I think, all argued after the fact that the intel wasn't there to justify the military action. And frankly, the benefit of us going in has never been proven to anybody. So I think that's Ron Paul's position. I think he's correct in this, in this area uh, of his debate. And Anthony, I also want to ask you um, to kind of take a step back and beyond Iran to take a look at the region. Uh, sure. Tension is mounting not only with Iran and um, in, in Afghanistan and right. in Pakistan, especially after the U.S. Uh, accidentally um, struck, uh, ki outpost, killed 24, right. 24 Pakistanis. Um, Pakistan is now taking action. They're telling the U.S. to get out, to get their drones out of there. Right. Um, and, and now in the region, we are seeing this growing anti-American sentiment. Um, what is behind this? Well, it's hard for us to be both daddy war bucks and the bad guy in Pakistan, but that's what we are. We're the one paying the bill at the same time we're being derided for what we're doing. Uh, and just right here earlier today, it turns out that there was a, a fire, a firearm exchange of gunfire uh, in Kashmir between the Indians and Pakistanis. This is the issue we continue to not understand. The Indians are the real issue with Pakistanis. So we've got to figure out how to deal with that realistically and get us out from being in the middle of this whole conflict. We're the issue right now. Frankly, there's other things we need to look at, which are larger. And, and last question. Sure. Um, back on Iran. Uh, how imminent do you think uh, war is with, with all this that we're seeing? Um, are we talking weeks, days? Um, I don't think anything's going to happen this month. I think that the Israelis are on a timeline. They're of their own timeline. And I think if anything's going to happen, it'll be late January, early February at the soonest. But the concern is obviously, will they be able to mate a nuclear weapon to a missile? That's the big piece that we're looking for now. As soon as the Israelis think that that may happen, I think they may take action. Scary stuff. Anthony, thank you so much sure, for, for weighing in on this. Uh, that was Anthony Schaefer, Director for External Communications Center for Advanced Defense Studies.